So we're continuing on our talk with triangles here with special right triangles. So in the last section, we dealt with right triangles and Pythagorean theorem, but now we're gonna look at some shortcuts that we can take. So instead of having to work out the Pythagorean theorem every time, we have these specific patterns which certain triangles will always follow. So we are going to look at a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we have patterns which this will follow, so we can use that to find the hypotenuse as well as the length of the leg. We can do the same thing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And the way we know that we have a 45, 45, 90 is because we have our 90 degree box, which makes it a right triangle, but then our other two angles are going to be 45 degrees each. Now the pattern which it will always follow is that my legs will always be the same measure. And then if I take that measure and I multiply it by radical two, that gives me the length of my hypotenuse. I'm gonna prove this to you by using Pythagorean theorem. It's a little bit hard to follow at first simply because I'm going to be using the letter S and the letter X. So let's look at my two sides here. I know my legs will always be the same length. So side squared, plus side squared equals, I'm not sure what my hypotenuse is going to be. Let's say we're trying to prove that it's going to be S radical two. So because I don't know it, I'm gonna call it X. But I'm going to take the hypotenuse squared, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, if I combine S squared and S squared, I get two S squared equal to X squared. But I'm not, worried about the square of my hypotenuse. I just want my hypotenuse itself, so I need to take the square root of each side, which gives me x equals, and then here, my s squared, when I take the square root of that, I get s, but my two has to stay under the radical. So there I've just proven to you that the hypotenuse is always going to have to be my side, my leg length, times radical two. So I'm gonna do two examples for you here. I'm actually doing four examples. I've got two examples of finding the length of the hypotenuse and then two examples of finding the length of the leg. So hypotenuse and then leg. Okay, so I'm going to go through, in this first example, they tell me that my leg is nine. If they asked me for my other leg, I would know it's nine. But they're not asking me for that, they're asking me for the length of my hypotenuse. Now from our pattern, we know that our hypotenuse is always going to be our leg nine times radical two. So that's it, that's all I have to do. Now if I look at this next example, when they gave me the leg, it already has a radical in it. So I know if they asked me for this, that would also be two radical two, but my hypotenuse is two radical two times radical two. Well, that's kind of silly if I leave it written like that. So what I have to do is actually multiply these radical twos together. And if you think back to when we did radicals and we were working with them, I know that two radical two times radical two is radical four, because I take the two times the two and I get the four. But the square root of four is really just the number two. So I'm taking two, multiplying it by two, I get four. So x equals four, that's what they were asking me to find. So all I had to do there is take two radical two times radical two. Again, remember that you can use your calculator in class, which is definitely going to be helpful, and you can also use that on the end of course exam. So now these next two examples are going like backwards, trying to find the length of a leg. The easiest way to do this is to just recognize that since you're looking for the leg from the hypotenuse, you know that whatever hypotenuse they gave you is equal to S radical two, as in the formula. So I'm gonna say six equals S radical two. And my goal is to find S, the length of the side or the leg. So I'm gonna divide by radical two, divide by radical two. So I know that S equals six divided by the square root of two. However, I cannot leave my answer like that because I'm not allowed to have radicals in the denominator of a fraction. So I need to rationalize it. And I do that by multiplying by radical two over radical two. So whatever this is, I'm going to multiply by that on top and bottom. This is called rationalizing. You should remember this from algebra. 
which means I now have s equals 6 radical 2 all over, oops, I'm sorry, radical 4. Now I'm moving stuff around. Radical 4, which really we've already said this, radical 4 is equal to 2. So 6 radical 2 over 2. And again, I can simplify even more because 6 divided by 2 is 3 radical 2. So that's your answer for that first example of finding the length of the leg. Now some of you may have just picked up on the fact that I'm going to take this 6, I'm going to cut it in half, which gets me 3, and I'm going to add in a square root. Every single time that's going to happen. So if you struggle with all of this rationalizing, this, this square root of 2, getting rid of that, and then simplifying, you can just know that if you have a whole number here, that 6 is going to get cut in half. I'm going to have 3 here and 3 here, and a radical 2 and a radical 2. So 6 divided by 2, I get 3 radical 2 as my leg. Now this next example is a lot easier because if you look at the formula, I've got something times square root of 2, and that same something that was there is equal to both of your legs. So here I have 15 times radical 2, so each of my legs are equal to 15. So that's a lot easier when they give you that radical 2 there. However, if they don't give you that or if they give you some other radical, then you have to go through and do this rationalization process. So here's four examples for you to go through and try. They're very, very similar to the problems that I gave you on the last page. And now we're going to talk about the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here's the formula they've given you here. Notice, though, that you now have three sides. You have the shorter side, the longer side, and the hypotenuse. Here's your shorter side in red, your longer side in blue, and your hypotenuse in purple. When you look at these rules here, you need to know the shortest leg. You need to know the length of the shorter leg. So even if they give you the longer leg and they're asking you to go to the hypotenuse, this is like your go-between. Now these properties here, this is something that you definitely have to memorize. I can help you out a little bit. If it helps you to remember that your hypotenuse is two times your shorter leg, you can remember hypotenuse. So if that kind of helps you to remember that your hypotenuse is going to be two times your shorter leg, then that's great. Your longer leg, you definitely need to know that as well. Just remember you're always going to be multiplying it by radical three. Okay, so let's look at these four examples. If I look at the first example here, the only side they give me is my hypotenuse. I know that the hypotenuse and the short leg are related because of this 2 here, hypotenuse, which tells me the hypotenuse is twice as big as my shorter leg. So really, because I'm trying to get my shorter leg, which is smaller, I just need to cut that in half, and I know that my shorter leg is 20. And then, to go from my shorter leg to my longer leg, I just need to take my shorter leg and multiply by radical 3. In the second example, they also give me my hypotenuse. So I have to take that and I have to cut it in half to get to my shorter leg. So x is going to be half of 2 radical 3, which is just radical 3, or 1 radical 3 if you want to put that 1 there. Then to go to the longer side, I have to multiply by radical 3. So now I'm going to do a little bit of math here. 1 radical 3 times radical 3 gets me radical 9, which is just equal to 3. So y equals 3. Okay, for the third example, they give me my shorter side, which is awesome because everything depends on the shorter side. So from the shorter side to my hypotenuse, I need to double it. So I get 24. And from my shorter side to my longer side, I just take my short side and multiply it by radical 3. And in this last example, they give us our longer side. Okay, so again, if I'm given my longer side, I definitely need to go to my shorter side first because everything revolves around my shorter side. So to get from my longer side to my shorter side, I'm dealing with radical 3. So what you need to ask yourself is, going from longer to shorter, I'm trying to get something smaller. 
So instead of multiplying by radical 3 like we've done, I need to divide by radical 3 because I'm trying to make this piece smaller. So let's do this math over here to the side. 2 radical 3 divided by radical 3. These cancel out, and I'm left with 2 as the length of my shorter leg. Then it's easy to get to your hypotenuse because all you have to do is double that. So you get 4 as the length of your hypotenuse. And here's two more examples for you to do. These are both concerning the 30, 60, 90 triangles. So make sure you go back to that other slide. You've got to memorize those different tricks and apply them here.